Hey, this is Andrew Brown from ExamPro, and we are looking at data core concepts. This one's four sheets long, so let's jump into it. So the first here is data, which is units of information, data documents, types of abstract groupings of data, data sets, unstructured logical grouping of data, data structures, which has some form of uh, structure, and there's variance, right? So we have unstructured, a bunch of loose data that has no organization or possible relation. We're talking about flat files here, various files that can reside in a file system, semi-structured, so that's data that can be borrowed or searched with limitations, so CSVs, XML, JSON, Parquet. And so if we're talking about XML files, the markup looks like HTML. For JSON, it's a text file that's composed of dictionaries and arrays. RC files are storage formats designed for MapReduce framework. Not something we covered in the uh, lecture content, but I just wanted to mention them there. ORC, so a columnar data structure, 75% more efficient than RC files, limited compatibility, works very well with Hive. We have Avro, so a row-wise uh, uh, data structure for Hadoop systems. You have Parquet, a columnar data structure that has more support for Hadoop systems than Orc. Then we were talking about structured data, so data that can be easily browsed or searched, so tabular data. And so tabular data is data that is arranged as tables. Think of spreadsheets. Uh, data types, how single units of data are intended to be used. We're not going to go through the whole list. They're not going to ask that on the exam, but you should know your data types. Uh, four types of roles uh, that Azure cares for you to know. We have database administrator, so configures and maintains databases. Data engineer, design and implement data tasks related to transfer and storage of big data. Data analyst, analyzes business data to reveal important information. Then we have our uh, tiers of um, computing. So we have software as a service, a product that is run and managed by a service provider. Platform as a service, focus on the deployment management of your apps. Infrastructure as a service, basic building blocks of cloud IT, provides access to networking computers, data storage and space. And remember that uh, we're talking about SQL, it's gonna be the SQL VMs on this layer, and then here it's gonna be the managed SQL and um, uh, Azure SQL databases, okay? So we're on to the second page here. So let's talk about data stores, unstructured or semi-structured data to, uh, uh, for housing data, a, a broad term that can encompass anything that stores data, databases, structured data that can be accessed quickly, and search, generally relative row-based tabular data for OLTP, data warehouses, structured and semi-structured data for creating reports and analytics, column-based tabular data for OLAP, data marts, a subset of data warehouse for specific business data tasks, data lakes, combines the best of data warehouses and data lakes, notebooks, data that is arranged in pages designed for easy consumption, batching when you send batches, a collection of data to be processed, not real time, streaming when the data is processed as soon as it arrives, so it's real time. Relational data, data that uses stru structured tabular data and has relationships between tables. And in terms of relationships for relational relational stuff, we have one to one. So uh, one to one. So think a monkey has a banana. One to many, a store has many customers. Many to many, a project has many tasks, and tasks can belong to many projects. A join table, a student has many classes through enrollments. The enrollments would be the join table, and a class has many students through enrollments. Then we're talking about row store, so or row wise. Data organized in rows, optimized for OLTP. Then you have column store or columnar. Uh, data organized in columns, optimized for OLAP, so analytics. Then we have indexes, a data structure that improves the reads of databases. This is also shows up under non-relational databases, but I just threw it here, just because. We have pivot tables. It is a table of statistics that summarizes the data of more extensive table from a database spreadsheet or BI tool. Now talking about non-relational data. Data that is semi-structured data associated with schema lists, no SQL databases, so we got key value. Each value has a key designed to scale, only simple lookups. I like to describe it as simple, dumb, and not a lot of features. Uh, we have document pr uh, primary entity is XML or JSON like data structure called a document. Columnar has a, a table like structure, but the data is stored around columns instead of rows. Graph data is represented with nodes and structures where relationships matter, okay? Uh, we're on to the third page here. So data modeling, an abstract model that organizes elements of data and standardizes how they relate to one another in the real world entities. Schema, a formal language to describe the structure of data used by databases and data stores during the data modeling phase. Schema list, generally used for when upfront data modeling can be foregone, foregone, <laughs> I did not write that right, but because the schema is flexible, normally used with NoSQL databases, data integrity, the maintenance and assurance of data accuracy and consistency over its entire Entire life cycle, data corruption, the act of data not being in the intended state will result in data loss of, or misinformation. Normalization, a schema designed to store non redundant and consistent data. Denormalize, a schema that combines data so that access to data is fast. ELTs or ETLs transform data from one data store to another, loads the data in an intermediate stage, doesn't work, does not work with data lakes. 
E-L-T. Uh, transformations done at the target data store uh, works with data lakes more common in cloud services. Think of Azure App Analytics, okay, uh, or Azure Synapse Analytics, where the data is loaded and done uh, in the actual data warehouse or et cetera. A query when a user requests data from a data store by using a query language to return the data result. Data source. A data source is where data originates from. Uh, for, so analytics and data warehouse tools uh, may be connected to various data sources. BI tools would have data sources as well. Data consistency, when data being kept in two different places and whether the, da uh, the, the uh, data exactly matches or does not match, strongly consistent every time you request data, you can expect consistent uh, data to be returned within a time. Eventually consistent, when you request data, you may get inconsistent data, so like stale data. Synchronization, continuous stream of data that is synchronized by a timer or a clock, so guarantee of time. Asynchronous, or asynchronization, continuous stream of data uh, uh, separated by start and stop uh, stop bits, no guarantee of time. And this is synchronization in terms of processing, okay? Data mining, the extraction of patterns and knowledge from large amounts of data, not the extraction of data itself. Data wrangling, the process of transforming mapping data from one raw data into from, uh, form into another format. And uh, we're on the last page here, so data analytics. Data analytics is examining, transforming, arranging data so that you can extract uh, and study useful information. Key performance indicators, probably not talked about in the exam, but I threw it in here because it, it's just important to know. Type of performance measurement that a company or organization uh, to determine performance over time. Then in terms of the types of uh, analytics that we can utilize, we have descriptive analytics, what happened, so accurate, comprehensive, lie data, effective visualization, so dashboards, reports, KPIs, ROI, that's when you have have all the information. Diagnostic analytics, why did it happen? Drill down to investigate root cause. Some guys they call that root cause analysis. We didn't talk about that in the course, but that's what it is. Focus on a subset of descriptive anal an analytics subsets. So it's a subset of this one up here, okay? Predictive analytics, what will happen? So use historical data with statistics and ML. Probably should highlight that in red there for you to generate trends or predictions. Predictive analytics, what will happen, use hybrid data with ML to predict future scenarios that are exploitable. Cognitive analysts, what if this happens? So use ML and NLP to determine what if scenarios to create plans if they happen. These are all really similar, but the thing is, is that they just, it's it's the lens you put on it, like the, the reason why you're doing it, okay? Then we talk about run drives, so storage and uh, storage synchronization service for a single user. And then we have SharePoint storage and storage synchronization service for an organization. There's a little bit more to that, but that is it for data core concepts.